This evening, our first story centers around the anticipation for Mashramani 2024 as the nation prepares to celebrate its 54th Republic Day tomorrow. Next on our agenda, President Dr. Mohamed Irfanani highlighted Ghana's housing competence and capacity during his address to the Parliament of St. Lucia. We'll explore the details of President Ali's proposal for Guyana to supply house solutions to St. Lucia. Shifting gears to diplomatic news, Dr. Richard Van Rose Charles is formally accredited as Ambassador Extraordinaire and Planning for Tentary of Guyana to Venezuela. We'll delve into the significance of this credential presentation, highlighting the commitment of both countries to diplomatic norms and the pursuit of increased bilateral cooperation. In energy-related developments, Prime Minister Brigadier Retired Mark Phillips announced significant progress in providing reliable energy access to hinterland communities during the Ghana Energy Conference. The government aims to reach 90% coverage by 2025, facilitated by the Solar Home Systems Project. And finally, in a tragic incident, an open pit gold mine in Venezuela collapsed, killing at least 50 people. We'll bring you the latest updates on this developing story. Welcome to this broadcast of Channel 2's Headline News Update for February 22nd, 2024. I am Baby Bacchus. Thank you for joining us. First up, as preparations begin for Mashramani 2024, expectations are high for the country's 54th Republic Day celebration tomorrow, Friday, February 23rd. The Ministry of Culture, Youth and Sports aims to enhance the festivities with more vibrant costume bands, a lively parade and performances by local artists. The Mashramani Float Parade is scheduled to start at 10 a.m. Various traffic arrangements will be implemented to facilitate the event. The parade route will commence along Middle Street, proceed east along Church Street, north on Orvin Street into J.B. Singh Road, and then west onto Thomas Land, entering the National Park from the southern entrance. Several intersections along the parade route will be closed for vehicular traffic from 6 a.m. on the parade day. Parking for patrons viewing the parade will be allowed on the avenues between Sandy Bob Street and Kitty Roundabout with additional parking areas designated. No parking will be permitted along the parade route to ensure the free passage of trucks and revelers. Alternative routes for traffic proceedings to and from the east coast of the Marara are provided to minimize disruption. Motorists are advised to cooperate with police directing traffic, adhere to traffic laws and regulations, and ensure safety before, during, and after the event. Encumbering roadways is prohibited to maintain free movement for all. Mashramani Republic Day in Guyana is celebrated annually on February 23rd. It is a significant cultural festival known as MASH. It brings together Guyana's diverse ethnic communities in vibrant celebrations, featuring competitions, parades, fancy floats, costumes, and street dancing. Mashramani means celebration after a cooperative work reflecting the nation's cultural heritage. Moving on, President Dr. Mohamed Irfan Ali highlighted Ghana's housing competence and capacity during his address to the Parliament of St. Lucia, signaling Ghana's readiness to assist with the country's housing deficit. He emphasized the potential for a mutually beneficial trade relationship between the two nations, citing significant trade volumes over the past decade. President Ali proposed the possibility of Guyana supplying housing solutions to St. Lucia, estimating a potential export value of $75 million in the immediate to medium term. He urged for the creation of an enabling environment to facilitate this opportunity. Meanwhile, Ghana is pursuing an ambitious domestic housing drive with over 30,000 families already allocated house lots as part of a commitment to distribute 50,000 house lots in the five years. The housing sector in Ghana has seen considerable growth with initiatives targeting low-income families and young professionals supported by subsidies and low-interest mortgages. Stick around when we return. Prime Minister announces hinterland energy progress and expansion plans and Dr. Van West Charles appointed Ghana's ambassador to Venezuela.
Come celebrate 1770 with us. It's a birthday. Yeah. Celebrate 1770 with it's us. It's birthday. Yeah. It's our 17th anniversary, and we're celebrating in style by giving away $17 million in 17 days. Top up with $1,000 or more for a chance to be one of 17 lucky winners of $1 million. Don't miss your chance. Top up today. Digicel, 17 years of bringing you the best. Yeah. Come celebrate 1770 with us. It's a birthday. Good, good girl, forget things. Good. What's the problem, Granny? I want money for bar for those surgery. I was dancing and I fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, Lot 238 South Road, Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get through. Plus, I could dance again. <laughs> Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Furnishing your home or office has never been easier. Here at Kisim's, our inventory of locally made and imported furniture, offered at amazing prices, will leave you wanting more. From vinyl, floor rugs, and carpets, bedroom, dining, and living room sets, mattresses, pillows, office desks, chairs, and filing cabinets, outdoor benches, and tables, we have a piece of furniture for every room imaginable in your home or office. Check out our flagship store at Industrial Site Rheinfeld or one of our branches in New Amsterdam, Port Morant, Caliverton, and Camp Street. Kisoon's Furniture, furnishing homes for over 50 years. Modern Optical Services, 316 Mill Street, Georgetown, telephone 226-1082. Welcome back. Dr. Richard Van Wyss Charles was formally accredited as Ambassador, Extraordinaire, and Plenipotentiary of Guyana to Venezuela, presenting his credentials to President Nicolas Maduro at the Mari Flores Presidential Palace on February 20, 2024. Ambassador Van Wyss Charles conveyed greetings from President Dr. Mohamed Irfan Ali and the people of Guyana, expressing his dedication to strengthening bilateral relations. President Maduro reciprocated by expressing his respects for President Ali and the Guyanese people, emphasizing the importance of diplomatic ties. The credential presentation highlights the commitment of both countries to diplomatic norms and the pursuit of increased bilateral cooperation. Ambassador Van Wyss Charles was accompanied by his spouse, Mrs. Vivian Roxanne Van Wyss Charles. In other news, Prime Minister Brigadier Retired Mark Phillips announced significant progress in providing reliable energy access to hinterland communities during the Guyana Energy Conference. He stated that approximately 66% of these communities now have access to electricity, up to from 50% in 2022. The government aims to reach 90% coverage by 2025, facilitated by the Solar Home System Project, which distributes solar-powered units to households in rural areas. Considering this success, the government plans to acquire an additional 10,000 units to expand renewable energy access further. This initiative is part of a broader strategy to diversify Ghana's energy mix, including hydropower, natural gas, and solar energy sources to reduce reliance on fossil fuels. Various transformative projects, such as the 300-megawatt gas plant and the Amila Falls hydropower project, are underway to enhance the national grid's capacity. Additionally, investments of $95.7 billion in the energy sector aims to support infrastructure upgrades and the development of solar farms. Prime Minister Phillips emphasized the government's commitment to clean and renewable energy initiatives, climate change adaptation, and promoting sustainable lifestyles. Collaboration with energy stakeholders and capacity building are essential to Ghana's transition towards clean energy. Don't go away after the break. Brazil blasts UN Security Council paralysis on Gaza at 10th G20 meeting and Chinese migrants seek political and economic asylum in Europe.
Come celebrate 1770 with us. Hey, hey. It's our 17th anniversary and we are celebrating with up to 40% discount on handsets. Get the Samsung A05 for just $16,000. Or go for the Samsung A15 for just $29,000. Or the Samsung A245 for just $35,000. But wait, there's more. You also get one month free data plan with any handset purchase. Limited time offer. Hurry to a Digicel store today. 17 years of bringing you the best. Good, good girl, forget things. What's the problem, Granny? I want money for bar for do a surgery. I was dancing and I fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, lot 238 South Road, Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get you. Plus, I could dance again. Oh. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Modern Optical Services. Three sixteen Mill Street, Georgetown. Telephone two two six one zero eight two. Furnishing your home or office has never been easier. Here at Kisoo's, our inventory of locally made and imported furniture, offered at amazing prices, will leave you wanting more. From vinyl, floor rugs and carpets, bedroom, dining and living room sets, mattresses, pillows, office desks, chairs and filing cabinets, outdoor benches and tables, we have a piece of furniture for every room imaginable in your home or office. Check out our flagship store at Industrial Site Rheinfeld or one of our branches in New Amsterdam, Port Morant, Carriverton, and Camp Street. Kisoon's Furniture, furnishing homes for over 50 years. Welcome back. Now we take a look at what's happening in the region and around the world. An open pit gold mine in Venezuela has collapsed, killing at least 50 people. Rescue efforts are underway for around 100 miners, believed to be buried more than 30 meters on the ground, as you see as Manuel Rafala reports. In central Venezuela, dozens of miners have been killed following the collapse of an open pit gold mine known as Buja Loca in the municipality of Angostura. There was a serious incident at the Borja Loca mine. Fifteen bodies and four injured have arrived so far. Now two more boats are arriving with about eight more bodies. While the bodies of some miners have been returned to their families, friends and relatives of workers who are still missing are desperately waiting to hear word of their loved ones. Are they dead? Are they wounded? Why don't they support us? Where are they? Video circulating on social media appears to show the first attempts to rescue miners, some believed to be buried more than 30 meters below ground. In 2016, Venezuela's government established mining development zones across the middle of the country, leading to several mining enterprises that operate outside the law. Mining for gold and other precious minerals offers a lucrative opportunity for many Venezuelans who struggle to make ends meet. A lack of safety regulations combined with harsh working conditions also make the job extremely risky for would-be miners. Manuel Rapalo, Al Jazeera. Internationally, the conflict in Gaza has overshadowed a meeting of G20 foreign ministers in Brazil. Earlier this week, Brazil's president accused Israel of genocide, angering Israel and its ally, the United States. Al Jazeera's Theresa Bo reports. Foreign ministers of the world's leading economies met in Rio de Janeiro to discuss a roadmap ahead of the head of state summit in November. Brazil's foreign minister, Mauro Vieira, criticized the paralysis of the UN Security Council on the wars in Gaza and Ukraine. Multilateral institutions are not equipped to deal with the current challenges as we have seen with the unacceptable paralysis of the UN Security Council with ongoing conflicts. This inaction results in the loss of innocent lives. Brazil does not accept a world that resolves differences with the use of military force. 
But during the meeting, the attention was also on the spat between Israel and Brazil's president, Lula da Silva, who compared Israel's war on Gaza with the Holocaust. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken met with President Lula in the capital, Brasilia, where they discussed the war in Ukraine, but also Gaza. Blinken said he did not agree with Lula's comparison to the Holocaust. All eyes here at the G20 summit are on the latest spat between Brazil and Israel. It's not the first time that President Lula da Silva shows his support for the Palestinian people. Back in 2010, he resisted to visit the tomb of Theodore Herschel, the founder of Zionism. But his criticism of Israel has generated tension with the opposition and the Jewish community in Brazil. Over 120 lawmakers, many of them supporters of former President Jair Bolsonaro, are now hoping to impeach President Lula, saying his comments show hostility towards a foreign nation. We feel ashamed that the president of our nation does not respect another country and is not impartial in this war. Our request for impeachment is not for ideological reasons, but because he committed a crime. Most analysts agree it is unlikely the proceeding will move forward. Brazil says it's trying to make the world more equal and give the developing world a say in international affairs. And that's why it's hoping the G20 meetings in Rio de Janeiro will be the first step towards change. Teresa Bo, Al Jazeera, Rio de Janeiro. Finally, the United States is also seeing an increasing number of Chinese migrants crossing into the country, motivated by both political and economic reasons. At the same time, many Chinese students and entrepreneurs are also choosing to immigrate to the U.S. in search of better economic opportunities. Al Jazeera reports. Large, gated homes in rural China. But the streets are almost empty. Many residents of this village in Hebei province are working overseas and sending home money to help their families. Yes, a lot of people here do migrate overseas, and it's to make money. In the late 1990s, as much as 85% of workers leaving the provincial capital of Shijiazhuang for jobs abroad were from here. There are many villages like this in China, where for generations people have been moving overseas in search for a better life. But now, many are taking the risk of illegally crossing into the U.S. from the Mexican border, and not just for economic benefits. This was in Shijiazhuang in January last year. The Post says these people are applying for passports, with the intention of going to the U.S. It was right around the time the government dropped its strict coronavirus rules. The zero COVID policy made almost every Chinese feel the system, how brutal the system is. So when the zero COVID policy was over, a lot of uh, Chinese people wanted to go out, wanted to escape. Chinese nationals made up less than 2% of the 2.5 million migrants documented by U.S. authorities at the southern border in 2023 but they're the fastest growing group, with more than 37,000 detained last year. That's 50 times higher than in 2021. Many apply for political asylum. The approval rate is high. So the, for, for Chinese migrants, the rate is like uh, more than 50 percent, sometimes more than 67 percent. So that means nearly two thirds of uh, those uh, migrants can get uh, asylum. In a statement sent to Al Jazeera, the Chinese foreign ministry says it isn't aware of the situation, but opposes and punishes any form of illegal migration. But tips on how to make the journey, often long, costly and arduous, are accessible online in China. Experts say the influx of undocumented Chinese migrants is likely to continue for as long as its economic future remains uncertain, and at least until the U.S. presidential election. And villages like this, where people are desperate to earn a living, could multiply. Barney Below, Al Jazeera, Tintia Zhuang, Hebei Province. This brings us to the end of our regional and global news coverage. Up next is the 3 debate forecast.
And that's Safe TV 2 Headline News for this Thursday evening. As we take our leave, we invite you to follow us on Facebook and YouTube. We'll be out for the holiday weekend, but you can tune in on Monday at 7 p.m. for more news. Until then, please take care of yourself and each other and do have a happy, natural night.